Hi, hello, and welcome. Thank you for joining me for today's Assemble This video. It's all about watercoloring for the start of this set of cards. And for part one of this two-part video series, I'll be sharing my process on how I like to use Karen Brush Marker Pro pens for watercoloring. I just love how easy they are to use and how vibrant their colors are. I'm featuring the July 2022 sentiment kit from Unity Stamp Company. It has this big, gorgeous vintage floral and lots of wonderful sentiments to pick from for your cards. I'm starting out with my flowers pre-stamped on some Canson XL watercolor paper and using Versifying Claire ink. For the first two panels, I decided to stamp those flowers just right in the center and they'll be the focal point of that card. For this panel, I stamped them at an angle in the two corners, so it kind of falls down the side and then up the side of the two corners. And then this one, I created a column. I stamped the first flower in the bottom, then I created a mask just with some copy paper, lined that up over the bottom stamped image, and then once that was in place, I just stamped again right on top. So I have this trailing like vine of images up the side of the card. Then I gathered the colors I wanted to use from the Karen markers and then a couple water brush pens. I do like to use a brush pen. Uh, I don't have to really worry about the amount of water that I'm using. It tends to create the perfect amount of flow for me. But if that's not your jam, then just grab your um, favorite paintbrushes and a cup of water and use whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm starting out by putting down just a little bit of water. I wasn't sure how these uh, pens were going to react with the paper. So I put a layer of water down just to kind of saturate the paper and then I'm picking up the pigment with my water brush pen, just tapping the end and then putting that down on the paper. Again, I wasn't really sure how this was going to react and I just wanted a really light wash of color for my first layer. So in order to control that, often I will pick up the pigment from the pen and then put it down onto the paper. As I moved along in creating and painting today, I found I did not need to do either of these techniques. The, the pigment from the colors went on the paper just beautifully. I just needed to tap it on and then use the amount of water in my pen, in my brush, and that moved that ink just great. Um, so this was an extra step that I do like to test in the beginning just to be careful because I don't want a big blotch of color <laughs> that I'm not prepared for or if I can't blend it out. Um, so it's a nice test. Um, but in this case I did find I did not need to do it. So moving forward you'll see me just drawing the pigment onto the paper and then using my water brush pen to kind of push it out and to move it across the, the image. And here I started out with my lightest peach color and just created a light wash over all the floral um, blooms just to start my first layer. And that's the name of the game for watercolor. In order to create really nice depth of color and variations in the, the light and the darkness, you need to do this layer by layer. And what's nice with the watercolor pens is it does not use a lot of water, so I don't have to wait very long for those layers to really dry enough for me to layer on top. So you may notice if you use more water, you're going to need a bit more time in between the colors in order to get the, the definition between the light shade, the medium shade, and in this case, the dark shade. So moving on to our medium shade, I'm just tapping on a layer of ink. Um, I'm focusing on the bottom of the bloom if we're looking at the bloom from the side. If we're looking at the bloom from the top, I'm using the shading that's within the stamped image. As you can see, I'm putting the, the medium tone where the dark lines are in the bloom, and that is mimicking shading. 
Uh, it's already kind of created for us with these stamped images. I don't really have to create that on my own. I just need to follow the lines that's already provided for me. I do not want to lose that really light color underneath. So I am being careful with how much of this medium tone I'm adding on. I'm tapping it on lightly and then using my water brush to just kind of tap and dab to push that ink out. And that's, a, that's just something that takes some practice on how much you might need to add. I like to be a little bit more conservative and not to put down as much ink because you can always add. It is a little bit harder to take away, but you can with watercolor. You just add water and then dab it off with a paper towel or something to pull that ink off and then you can start over again. But I just prefer to move slower and lighter and then I can build up those layers over and over. You can see I'm being a bit cautious with how much I'm laying down. Just tapping on, following those dark lines with my with my marker and then I switch over to my brush pen and just kind of tap over the top. I like this tap and dab method rather than pushing my brush from side to side and really moving that over the entire image. It just creates like this modeled effect and the ink kind of flows on its own. So I just like to let it do its thing. I just add enough water to kind of watch it soften and to soften up that stark line from the marker look and turn it more into a watercolor look. So I'm just going to continue on with each bloom one by one and just add a depth with this medium tone. And it takes a bit of time. I'll be honest, watercoloring is not fast. If you want to have um, these layers of looks, they do take time because you have to do each layer one by one, let it have enough time to dry so you can do that next layer. So I'm just finishing off my first two layers and finishing the light tone and the medium tone. For the peachy color, I decided to add in a third layer just because those two tones were fairly muted, I needed a bit more contrast. So I pulled in a third deeper orange red color and I'm going to add one more layer of um, shading. And in this case, I decided to do all the blooms at once. So I'm just tapping on that dark color, you can see how much more contrasted it is between those first two layers. You can really see that stark line. And while I'm, I'm going ahead and doing all the blooms, I'm just adding and, and dabbing on just the tiniest amount of color. I'm prepping each of the blooms. And this is because I already have a layer of color down. So there's a little bit more movement that's going to be happening. It's easier to move that pigment, I find. So once I pr put down the little bit of the, the darkest color on each of the blooms, I'm coming in with my pen, doing that tap, tap, dab, dab, little motion so I don't spread out that ink too much. But I do want to soften that marker line look so it doesn't look so stark. And I'm not squeezing my pen. I'm not adding any water. The, the, mark, the water brush pen has enough water flowing through it to handle that for me. I don't have to think about it. If you're using a brush and dipping it into a cup, you may need to tap off some of that water so it's not so um, watery because that will really spread that ink out and you won't have the definitions of the, the three tones. And that's what I'm really trying to create with these pens is the definition between all the different three tones. And here I go again, just kind of dab, dab, dabbing and pushing that ink around just a smidge. I like a dab and kind of a squiggly motion. <laughs> it's just a technique that I have built up over time. And I think you'll find yours the more that you practice as well. 
So now that I've finished all my flowers, I'm going to start working on the leaves. Now what's nice about this stamped image is there's a lot of definition and a lot of detail already in the stamp. So I don't have to do much. I'm just adding a layer of color, which is my lightest green, behind all those leaves. And I'm just drawing over the top. Because once I add water, it'll kind of loosen that watercolor pigment and I'll be able to spread it out just slightly beyond the edge of those leaves. And that's what I'm going to do here. You'll just see me tap and dab and kind of push it around and just extend it just beyond the edge of those leaves. So you get the hint that they are green and it mimics the way that watercolor just kind of flows on its own. I'm also being very careful not to blend that ink too much into the orange. Sometimes it can pick it up, so that's why it's really important that your flower portion is fairly dry. So when the water gets near it, it doesn't pull it into your, your green. Now I'm just going to add another layer of a green in a shade just a smidge darker. And I'm doing that over the leaves in the darkest parts of the shaded areas and then also kind of behind the flowers and uh, around the leaves closest to the center of the image just to create a bit of a shadow and a contrast um, between the lightest green and by adding another shade of green a little bit darker just creates a, a bit of a shadow. And then I'll come back in with my, um, with my brush and just kind of soften that up and start to push it out just slightly a little bit farther around the image to start creating my halo. Now in this case I decided the halo around the, the flowers was going to be green so I'm just going to be extending that out. I'm not adding any extra ink at this point. I'm just pulling the ink that's already there and pushing it out even farther around the image to create my, my green halo. That way, as that halo starts to get larger and larger, it gets lighter and lighter and really starts to blend into the whiteness of the watercolor paper. And what's nice is the, the pigment that's already on the paper will kind of blend and spread for you. So you don't have to add too much. And once I like the size of that halo, I did come in with my lightest color green and dabbed on some speckles. Watercolor has this nice, fun movement of shading, and so that's what I'm mimicking here by adding those dots and then slightly tapping and spreading them out. They have that mimicking effect of the, the way that watercolor moves. And that finishes off the, and that finishes off this panel. And I'm going to give you a look at all the other three panels. The techniques are the same for the flowers, but it's just kind of interesting to see how the different colors kind of blend differently. For these in the purple tones, I only have two colors. I have my light violet and then a darker violet. And I did the same exact method, but I only needed two tones of pigment because they were so contrasted. For the blue, I again only needed two colors. I just needed a light blue and then a darker blue tone. And that was enough of a contrast. I didn't want to add any more. I went ahead and colored in the leaves on this one, but I didn't want that halo to be green. I decided I wanted to extend and bring that blue back out. So I pulled my lightest blue and started to create my halo with that. Now I did add quite a bit of water with the blue because it is so pigmented in order to lighten it up so that halo really fades. I added and squeezed the barrel of my pen and then pulled that out and lightened it as it got towards um, the white edge of the watercolor paper. So you have to kind of adjust your technique to the pigment color. Um, the blue was vastly different than the green and so I kind of changed my technique and used more water for that reason. And then once I created the halo here, I let it dry just slightly, but not, not too much. And I went back in and did the same technique of dabbing on the, the blue pigment 
around the, the closest part to the flowers. I wanted that mottled effect again. And to do that, I had to pick up the ink from the pen rather than dabbing the pen directly onto the paper just because it is so pigmented. It did not um, delineate. It didn't spread as nicely as the green did. So that's what I ended up changing for the blue halo. And for the last panel, I love this idea of having purple and blue flowers. And so I used the lightest color purple and the lightest color blue and I drew the, the purple mainly in the center of the, the flowers and the blue towards the edges, and then just dabbed a little bit of blue in the center so they would blend together, just like that. And then I used my water to dab and tap and just slightly spread it out. I didn't want them to, to mix and blend perfectly together. I wanted that mottled look of there being two definitive colors in the blooms, but they kind of blend together to create the shadowing. So it's kind of fun. It's, it's something that I have not done before, so I wasn't sure how well this technique would turn out for me, but it turned out just fine. As long as you're using complementary colors, which are near each other, like blues and purples, or oranges and yellows, or reds and yellows, uh, they will blend nicely together without creating like a muddled, yucky brown look. <laughs> so that's why I started out with the blue and the purple, because I knew that they would complement each other and blend nicely. And I think it turned out really pretty. Something I forgot to mention is in the top corner of my screen there, and that is a, a baby wipe. And that's really important. You need to clear off your brush in between colors. So when I went from red to green or blue to purple, I did wipe that off onto the baby wipe. If you ever have too much water on your pen, you can wipe it off either on a paper towel or a baby wipe, something like that that just cleans your brush. It's a great way to control your water amount on your brush and then also to make sure you're not mixing your colors when you change um, between something like a red and a green. So here are our finished panels. I just really love how pigmented the Karen pens are. They just create these really vibrant colors and the stamped floral image is so easy to watercolor with. You don't have to do anything to create the look or the shadowing. You just need to add the color behind it to really make it pop. Please join me for part two of this series where I'll turn all of these panels into cards and I'll have a link to that in the description of this video plus all the supplies I used for these cards on my Dollhouse Designs YouTube channel and blog. As always, if you have any questions or a sweet comment, post below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye!